got all that. Shovel. Yeah. Your family's up in Albany, right? Mm-hmm. My sister's. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm thinking of my mom in Virginia. Oh, no. oh, okay. Right there. Yes. My mom's been trying to nail uh, down ex- you know, exact days, and I'm like, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> best as I can predict. Let's be ready on this. Let's be Let's be flexible. Be on the curve with your bags. <laughs> Well, that's good. Mary gets a white Christmas then. I would Supposed guess. To down here. Yeah, yeah. I've right. forgotten that. I finally placed a rush order with Ellen Bean to get some boots Ellen set up to all the It can't <laughs> not play in it when you do that. Heidi's Christmas gift this year Ellen is a, uh, like a little down Ellen. coat. And I was like, I think I'm going to give that to her early. <laughs> we drive. Have a handy in the car. <laughs> like, Merry Christmas. You're going to need it. <laughs> We were debating what to bring for the boys, and my sister's like, oh, we've got extra. My mom is I wasn't there, but... Does she have kids? Though. Yeah, and they're about the same. Well, her two girls are a little older. And then, well, I guess Joseph's in between the girl and boy, so she has four. That yeah. is so nice to have toys there, clothes. Extra well, I mean, Grandma's got toys, though. Are you going to date? Yeah, we're driving up. Is that where you live? Joseph. I live north of Dayton. Just a little bit. Okay. I'm from Jersey. Yeah. 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 Since nobody knows, okay. like, yeah. the little yeah. town she's yeah. Yeah. grew up in, I'm like, oh, okay. please. <laughs> 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 I see freezing rain. I guess Thursday is supposed to be with the two so. They did get snow yesterday though, so we're like, maybe they will still be snow. It was snowman, like it was packing. It was packing snow, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want to try and pull up your presentation over here? I still comment on you doing it. 
You can just pull it in. Just the duo. We're all like, we couldn't, we'd be gone by. Okay, we can have well, you can click and leave the Which is fine. Yeah, what's interesting, like, for the first year, like, we were all kind of insane. So, we have a discussion of, like, Right. Where are you going to stand? You can use that one or... Let's see. There's a small delay, but yeah, you they could see it. Oh yeah, day, so we'll have like a three-day cookbook. There's a small delay, but you can think of it. Sorry. I always have like a funny, I just mentally have a cookbook. I know, it's not very good. Thank you. How many of you just... I couldn't... What do you mean, I'm so happy? That was a little hard question. I'll have to use this to advance, right? It wasn't like an unreasonable amount. I have to use this to advance. Yeah. I have to advance my two. Why, like, that may not be. And they're very... Well, if you want, I can help you. You'll get it. At least... Well, this one I need for my nose. Yeah. That one, well, the keyboard behind the bed is Yeah. Um, you can't the data set there. You can't. Whereas the research team paper is it's true, right? In order to put you know, well, there's um, so you say, you, say, like, you, you stay where it's comfortable, yeah, we'll make say, like, here's, yeah, we'll make the adjustments. Here's the Probably at some point, so they can make her feel higher, so I'm not just going to dance. Which one? Yeah. You do a almost every week, you do an essay. It's like and then they decide it's like oh, maybe a page or two mm -hmm. and it's like yeah, she you unlike she everything else where you're like exciting yes, you yes. have a reference every few yeah. sentences this is like you're not I mean, I you just do whatever their names are so it's not well I think I would have Oh, that is going to be weird. Could you clean it off? Can you see it from here? Yeah, it's just more of a reach it. Well, don't worry about it. I can adjust it. work per se. It's like, you know, it's weird. It's like, Okay. Like, they used to have that one. Like, yeah. She had a draft. And like, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I had to do a YouTube streaming because uh, Connect oh. is down today. Oh, we don't know. Oh. We have six people watching. Oh, great. Seven.
Oh, we have six people watching. It's going okay. Yeah. Right, and you know, we're trying to get an article out. And pressure's on. Jazz wants to finish it by this afternoon. So I spent the whole day reviewing the article yesterday, only to have two other people make comments mm -hmm. on it. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> 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 you still have electricity here. Which article is this? This is the Wireless <laughs> Clusters article. Used to not care. Do you know? Yeah. Cool. Hopefully. Well, do you know? Yeah. Cool. Hopefully. Yeah. By tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Get it out of so they can sit. That's exactly what's going to happen. Exactly what's going to happen. Um, so, the Egyptian helping paper, did you guys make part of this? Yep, it's pretty much done. I had like two tweaks and then just have to like upload it. We started that. Well, after we started the Bible Clusters movie. Well, let's see if it gets accepted. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, after Natasha's people, which we're trying to shake out of her for a long time. She's close. I helped up some folks at the other, at the office trying to find something for me. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's. This paper is cool. pretty easy. So anyway, right? I was just because say, I'll just really you to really quickly. The last oh, paper, Jasmine, and then it's got some questions. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. And then geography. So I mean, it's a luxury. We had to do a different right. literature yeah. review. Yeah. 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 We obviously yeah. had to do, look at different yeah. literature because it's adults versus teens in the Middle East versus South Carolina. But like, the approach to analysis was. Very similar, and so we're the structure of the paper. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we, we yeah. never were at a point where we're like, what do we do now? Like, so yeah. to, uh, to, oh, to the second, so that would be the second help Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's nice because like no one. And if you want to follow me, no one has looked at help seeking in that population in that region. So we could do a little more straightforward analysis. We didn't have to get too crazy. Yeah. That was good. So if you get that next acceptance, that'll be your food. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see. So, yeah. His favorite word is still trash truck. So, trash truck? Yeah. 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 So I think that this paper in particular is going to be able to squeak it. Well, this paper was for uh, uh, cultural area studies, but another dog that I've got in my back up. There's other projects on the other side. There's plenty of them. Plenty of them. Always plenty of them. <laughs> That's right. So. <laughs> where did you uh, Where did you order that standing desk from? Oh, uh, well, it took us a while to get it in. So, yeah. <laughs> you can know ahead of time. Fancy. You want something like this now yeah. for yours? It's custom. <laughs> yeah. exactly. custom built. Exactly. And now. <laughs> Well, welcome everybody. This is an exciting day for Holly. Uh, we'll, we'll probably do accolades and comments after her presentation, but wanted to just um, 
welcome Holly and her family. I don't know, Maureen, if you want to pan the room so Ooh. that folks can see that <laughs> in and out. Uh, Holly's mom, Brenda, is here, as well as her husband, Ben, and her adorable sons, uh, David and Joseph. So they may be chiming in and helping her with her presentation. <laughs> but uh, let's turn it over to Holly for her presentation on where cultures collide. And uh, can you see? Can you work from there? Great. I know since there's a delay, let me figure out where I'm at. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, my presentation is on where cultures collide, uh, Hispanic family involvement in education among different socioeconomic groups. So a little background on this. Um, in 2013, the <coughs> U.S. schools uh, composition showed that Hispanics are the largest minority group in the U.S public schools, and they're also said to be the fastest growing. So um, it's also noteworthy then that between whites and then minorities, such as Hispanics and blacks, that there's an education gap, meaning the educational outcomes tend to be lower for students in these minority groups than for Caucasians. Um, there's also an education gap based on socioeconomic status, so you know economic resources like income, occupation, education for adults. Um, and so, obviously, for children, it would be their their parents' educational level and things. So I'm going to refer to that as SES or social class. Um, high school students from the lower SES backgrounds tend to have lower educational outcomes than the higher SES students, and there are differences in their positive educational outcomes. So some researchers have noted that the gap seems to be narrowing some between those ethnic groups, actually, like Caucasians and Hispanics but that it's expanding within ethnic group by the socioeconomic status, suggesting that the gap may be more a function of SES than ethnicity per se. So there's nothing evidence that socioeconomic status has its own culture too, that it influences the way that people view and deal with the world, their interactions, their social networks, their activities, knowledge, structures of the home, to the degree that some re researchers actually believe that class culture has a more powerful effect on perceptions and actions than ethnic culture. So um, as I was looking at this education gap, you know, what's responsible for it? Is it this lack of economic resources? Is it ethnic differences? Or is it something else entirely? We're going to have questions at the end, but. Okay. Well, Mom. Joseph. We're going to help. We'll, we'll see how help you. Oh, you helping her? Could make your family stronger. That's right. So, my four-year-old, would you help me make your family stronger? So, that's all the research you need, really. A feature PhD student here. Yes, right. Sign them up. So, so I, I was also interested in looking at some of the research. Obviously, we know it's good to help. Um, and, I was trying to figure out, you know, what, what is responsible for this education gap. Um, part of the issue is that um, a lot of the ethnic minority groups are also in this lower SES category. So um, it's been, people don't necessarily tease out which, you know, what's responsible to this. A lot of times they'll analyze either socioeconomic status or ethnicity, but they won't look at both and kind of how these interact and what, what's going on. So, um, of course, even without knowing exact causes, people have presented ways to address this educational gap and to help all students, regardless of their background, to succeed educationally. So one of those factors, and the focus of my specific studies, is parent involvement in education. So getting these families involved and seeing if that will help, um, help these students. Okay. <coughs> So based on past research, we have substantial reason to believe that family involvement um, in education does improve student achievement, their behavior, their attitudes towards education. Some research suggests that family involvement um, is lower for minority groups and lower SES students than for Caucasians and higher SES. Or in more recent studies, that perhaps it influences minority students differently. What their parents do maybe um, is, doing it, is influencing them differently. So, there's also no consensus on what constitutes involvement. 
does it mean? Um, there are federal mandates that schools have to get parent, parents involved in schools, but not really a, a definition of what that means. So um, there's also not much recent research on what aspects of involvement influence high school students who are Hispanic, and even less on looking at that by socioeconomic group. So I decided to address this specific gap in the research. Um, Past literature has looked at family involvement directly influencing academic out, um, outcomes for some groups, so I decided to include that. But other research led me to believe that Hispanic families especially view their educational influence as happening through their influence on who their child is and what kind of effort the student puts forth, their desires, their behavior. Um, so to begin this search, I wanted to look at family involvement among Hispanic families in different SES groups um, to see if you know how this plays out if all Hispanic families are involved the same across the board or if that also differs by SES so my specific research questions common involvement among high SES families and then low SES families and then I wanted to see if there were significant differences in this and I predicted that there would be some um, but not all of the practices would be different among the groups. Um, I also wanted to look at if there were differences for which outcomes family involvement influences for the different SES groups. And I predicted that yes, there would be differences and the differences would be significant. And then I wanted to look for my last two questions at the mechanisms. How is family involvement influencing these outcomes? Um, and so I specifically was looking at student aspirations, student behavior at school, and student effort and persistence as a mediator of involvement on, um, on, the, on the academic outcomes. And then I wanted to know, for my last question, if these were significantly different. And I said, you know what, I don't think they're really going to be different between the two SES groups. I think they're going to be the same. So um, a little background on what I used to figure this out. I used the Educational Longitudinal Study of 2002. Um, it's a nationally representative stratified probability sample. Um, okay, a really big study of 10th grade students in the United States. They started in 2002. And there were follow-ups with that same group of students in 2004, 2006, and 2012. So um, the initial wave included, they surveyed students, parents, and some others, and then the follow-up surveys were only with the students. And then they got some school data, like their GPA and test scores and things from the, um, from the school. There were over 2,200 students who self-identified as Hispanic from the, but I limited my sample to those who had a parent questionnaire, um, who answered that first year follow-up and then who also had done a, a test, yeah. since that was one of my, yeah. my outcomes. Um, so I took these groups, I took all of the Hispanic students and I divided them into high and low SES. Um, the ELS had actually designed a variable for SES using parents' income, their mother and father's <coughs> educational level, and then the occupational prestige of both the father and the mother. And so I took that variable and I used um, the quartiles that they had to kind of, and I used the two lower quartiles for the low group and then the two higher ones. They made a high group and a low group um, to, to try to figure out what, what's going on among students, so. Okay, so I took all that information and I put it in a structural equation model this is kind of an overview real quick of um, the end product. I'm going to go through just very briefly what each of those means, especially um, family involvement. Like I said before, it doesn't have a set definition. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how I defined it in this study um, for my purposes. Um, this quick descriptive. So family rules, communication, um, pretty straightforward. And then spending time together was kind of my, um, a variable that I created. It's meant to embody this idea of a pollo, which is a moral and emotional support that is seen as very influential to educational success among Hispanic families. Mm -hmm. So that idea of building relationships, knowing about the child's life, and I 
obviously doing that requires spending time together. So I took um, some questions that they had in the LS and a uh, general time together was kind of things like, did you, you know, go for family outings? Did you eat dinner together? You know, attending religious services. And then school and sports related time was obviously more focused on going to school events, going to sporting events, things like that together. Um, <coughs> So, and then obviously my last variable involvement at school. Um, Hispanic families tend in research not to be super involved at the school building, um, but this tends to be the most visible way parents are involved. So schools tend to put a lot of uh, emphasis on this kind of involvement. In this study, they measured it by participation in PTO, which was three of the five questions and then volunteering at school or belonging to another organization with parents from the school. Um, that's kind of how they hit up the that. Obviously the alphas, um, you have quick descriptives here. The alphas were a little low for a couple of them, but um, those were, uh, I felt like separating the time together were important to tease that out and obviously the at school involvement since that's uh, kind of the typical type of involvement that schools see. Uh, I felt that was still very important to include. Um, and then we talked a little bit about the mediators before those. Um, again, quick descriptives on those. So uh, the student effort and persistence was questions like, if the student put forth their best efforts in when they study, if they continued working even if the material was difficult, trying as hard as possible. So that was the student answering those questions about themselves. Um, student aspirations, how far they thought they would get in school, and then Behavior was, again, self-reported by the students if how often they had been late for school, skipped school, got in trouble for not following the school rules, things like that. Um, and then the outcomes are pretty straightforward as well. I decided to use the GPA of the students, uh, their math test score of a standardized test that they took, uh, college enrollment after high school, if they had dropped out sometime during high school and then uh, community involvement if they had performed unpaid volunteer or community service in the past two years. Um, missing data, there was obviously missing data as, there's, as if anything I chose to address that using full information maximum likelihood <laughs> in Avis. Um, I guess the important part of that is that researchers have found it to be very efficient for incomplete data. So that's why I chose uh, that specific uh, way to address it. Uh, enough background. What you've all been on the edge of your seats for. The big results. Everybody loves results. All right. So my first research question was common family involvement. Um, so for the high SES, you can see that the most frequent practice was spending time together and then communicating. So those are um, Two very important things for high SES families. They uh, oh. often talked with their children. They sometimes had rules, frequently spent time together. A little less often, but still common, was the school and sports related time. Uh, and then at school involvement really was not very common. So 1.5 out of a possible five um, participation on that as the average. So um, not something they necessarily engaged in a whole lot. Looking at the low group, they're actually um, pretty similar. If spending time together was the most frequent, again, and communicating with their children, again, was the most uh, frequent practice they engaged with. Um, and again, the lowest is still about one out of five is that at school involvement. So again, still not common um, among both, both groups. Um, I took these and I put them into a measurement model to see if they fit well together um, for family involvement. So it was a good fit for all three groups, for the high group, the low group, and then for everybody, all Hispanics together um, as a whole. And I used my, my standard for that was a, a RAMC of less than 0.05 and then the CFI and the TLA had to be above 0.9 um, because I had a large sample size, I, I could use that 0.9. Um, cut off. So all of the practices did fit together as family involvement for a group. The factor loadings for all three models um, were significant. 
at the 0 0.001 level or better. So um, obviously, for, and then for both groups, rules kind of contributed the least amount. I had that lower factor loading and then um, school and sports time together for both groups as well was also that strongest loading. Um, so this definition of family involvement did work and so I used that to then compare between the groups um, to figure out are there significant differences. Um, just looking through the numbers, the higher SES families had higher um, average involvement on all of the measures. I looked at ANOVAs and they were significant, um, but then I did a multiple groups analysis, so I kind of, um, I took the measurement model and it kind of compares it to the, between the high and the low groups, and um, it was significant, and that meant that the high and the low SES groups actually attribute different meanings to this latent family involvement construct. So I then, tried to figure out what the culprits were. I constrained the factor loadings individually. And I found that uh, rules and at-school involvement were not significant. So all of, so communication time together and school and sports time together had different definitions between high and low groups, which meant I couldn't compare them um, because they're not defining them the same. It's kind of um, apples to oranges, they say. So I was able to compare at-school and rules and those ANOVAs were significant, um, between significantly different between the high and the low groups. So um, I guess the other <laughs> the other important thing about this was that it meant I could could then not test three of my six research questions um, because this was uh, the family involvement was different. I couldn't necessarily figure out if there were significant differences um, for my future future questions. So um, my fourth question was about these differences, if there were significant differences. So I couldn't compare those, but I could look at the correlations and just kind of see patterns for each group. So that's what I chose to do to get uh, at least some information <laughs> from, from my study. Um, this is obviously a lot of information, a lot of numbers. I guess the takeaway for this is really that um, so the bold and the asterisks are significant. So you can see there's a lot of significance for the group as a whole. When you have all the Hispanics together, most of, um, so this is the family involvement and then the outcomes are here. Um, and the mediators at the bottom. So there's a lot of significant relationships here between the, the things that I chose. But then when I broke it down, by high and low groups, there was a big difference. You can see there's a lot less bold going on for the high SES group. Um, the family practices with the strongest correlations, so at school involvement, column five, um, had some of the strongest ones, and then general time together, which was column three. Um, you can see with the outcomes, the gray is the outcomes. You can kind of, hopefully that makes it a little more readable. Um, and then interestingly, Column one rules was actually not correlated with any of the outcomes for this high SES group, uh, which was especially, and it was only with one of the mediators down here. So I thought that was an interesting, um, interesting finding. But um, let's see. So for the low group, as a quick look, um, spending time together in school and sports related activities four was correlated significantly correlated with all of the outcomes. Um, and then with obviously two of the three um, mediators. So, so it's kind of the, the big deal for the low SES group was this school and sports related time. And then general time together, which was column three, I think. Yeah. Um, column three was also, also had a lot of significant uh, correlations with for this lower group. So, um, so also noteworthy is that rules, again, didn't have a great showing for the outcomes, but it did for the mediators in this group. It had some stronger relationships there. So even without the statistical comparison, we can kind of see that there are different patterns 
in, in what family involvement influences for these students in the different groups. Um, so I turned this, that's my official structural equation model for the, uh, just the family involvement and the outcomes. It obviously had um, good, good statistics there, good fit, I should say, through the latent construct. I tried some different things and um, some different outcomes, but those are the ones I, I came up with, the ones I talked about earlier. And I compared, I did a multiple groups analysis for just these outcomes as well to see how they related. And um, high and low SES students then assigned different meanings to college enrollment and to dropout. But the rest of the things they, they do, so they do GPA and math test scores and community involvement pretty much the same between the high and low SES students. But these two they view um, differently. So. Um, and looking at like all the family involvement to how family involvement influences each of these um, outcomes, it was significant for all of the groups. So both high and the low family involvement does influence GPA, math test score, college enrollment dropout, and community involvement for the high and the low SCS groups. Um, I then added in the mediators to figure out this mechanism, like are this family involvement influencing outcomes through the mediators. And um, so I did find that it, when I did a, a comparison between the two groups, so the effort and persistence has a different meaning for the high and the low. So again, not really able to compare statistically with all of the mediators, but um, they had different definitions here, but um, we did the next one. Um, the next slide. So the model did fit. It had the TLI was a little low on the low SES group, so not necessarily ideal. Um, round, round it. It's fine. But it's <laughs> rounded. That's right. Round, <laughs> round up. Um, so still a little low, which was interesting, but um, the other interesting thing was when I added those mediators, before I added the mediators, um, family involvement to the outcomes as a whole, was they were all significant. But then after I added the mediators in, that changed. So for the group as a whole, it was still significant, but then for the high and the low, it was not significant. So. Um, I took that to indicate that the mediators are really how family involvement is influencing the outcomes. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to look at these mediators a little bit more, figure out what's going on at this indirect effect that it's having. Um, so instead of looking kind of at this top path, I was looking at how it's influencing through that lower path. Um, all the effects were significant going through it this way. Um, GPA had the strongest indirect relationship for each of the three groups. So this family involvement going through the attitudes and behaviors strongly influences students' GPA. Um, and community involvement had the weakest relationship in each group, so it's not nearly as influenced by this. So um, I put that into English a little more for people. Um, kind of the big take homes, so common family involvement for high and the low groups. Uh, what my findings really reinforce past research that, you know, there's more informal than formal involvement among Hispanic families. Uh, the communication and roles were, you know, also parents communicate, they have rules for their student, their children, that's all uh, kind of the same as in past. Adding to the literature is that um, this idea of spending time together. That was the most frequent practice measured among both SES groups. So it's important to Hispanic families. And spending time in school and sports related activities was also less common, but it was still frequent for both groups. And so, and it's I also noteworthy that these are then related to student outcomes, even if it's not necessarily thought about as involvement. It is influencing students' education, so it's important to consider that um, um, in, in future research. 
Okay, so the differences in involvement and rules, the two that we were able to compare, again, we weren't obviously able to compare some of them. The lower SES had fewer rules than the higher ones. Um, we I thought this might be a function slightly of what rules were assessed, checking, help with home checking homework, giving privileges for grades, limiting for poor grades, um, requiring chores and work at home, limiting TV time or video games, limiting going out with friends on school nights. Um, those things, so low SES families tend to have a more distinct separation of home and school than higher SES families. Um, in addition to providing a little more freedom from adult direction, they value different kinds of knowledge, subscribe to more of a natural growth perspective, meaning like, oh, you know, I'll take care of the basic needs of children and then they kind of do their own thing and learn and grow, however, rather than that more directed learning that higher SDS can say, okay, like, let's do your workbooks now. Let's, <laughs> let's put you in this activity or that activity. Um, so it may be that the rules that the ELS chose to assess may not be as common for low versus high. Um, it's also interesting that rules in past research were significant significantly related to um, outcomes for students, but in this study they weren't. Um, as for the high SES family, there was almost no, no relationship. So um, it, I think uh, perhaps in, in research, maybe that lower SES group is kind of what, what they're, what's finding that significant relationship from. Um, it's also interesting that for the lower SES students, it actually had a bigger impact. Um, which actually, are we talking about that? Yeah. So even though lower SES students have fewer rules, it may be that they have, it looks like they have a stronger influence on those lower SES than the higher SES students. They could be more important for them. Um, at school involvement, not very common for either group, but there is a difference between high and low, and it is significant. So um, I guess that also adds to the research and expands previous research by identifying the pattern with specifically Hispanic families, which usually are just kind of grouped as like a less involved altogether. But there is a high and a low um, SES um, factor in there. Um, okay. Almost there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so high and low SES families also have uh, different perceptions for communication, spending time together, school and sports time together. And that may, in a sense, I feel like personify kind of the unique identities of high and low SES families and identify an important starting point for deeper analyses. Um, as these were the three practices that had the strongest, core, strongest factor loadings to the latent family involvement construct and significant correlations with outcomes and student attitudes. So it's interesting that the things that were most strongly related to family involvement are also different for the two groups um, in terms of how, they're, how they view them and how they define them. So, okay. Fuck. Sorry. Fuck. So. Fuck. Okay. So then, how this impact the family involvement on student outcomes? So, um, the strongest effect of family involvement for both high and the low groups was on GPA. So we can see that when families are involved, it's influencing the student's GPA, followed by if students get enrolled in college, how their math test scores are, and then it does still influence dropout and community involvement, but not quite as, as much as the other two. So um, the outcomes most influence were academic in nature for both groups. Um, and we're going to review quickly. So bang for your buck, like what provides the most influence for these two groups? The strongest influence from high SES families spending time together in everyday activities and volunteering in their groups like PTO and at school 
um, had the strongest relationships. Um, so those are probably the things then that those families might want to focus on more. Obviously, everybody's got limited time, limited resources. So if we don't have time to do it all, like choose what's going to help the most, right? So, um, and specific outcomes. Again, if you're looking to influence GPA, it was influenced by almost everything. So, um, but if they really wanted to influence community involvement in this way, you know, it, it was impacted by being involved at the school for this higher group. Um, there's obviously probably other, many other factors going into that that were not studied here, but. Um, for low SES families, the strongest influence, again, was the spending time together in everyday activities, um, and then also spending time in the school and sports related activities. So, one at a time, spend time with your kids. You know, it's, it's important, and, and it does influence, influence children. Um, the specific outcomes, again, GPA and then dropout were pretty close um, by what they were influenced, and then um, college enrollment as well. Uh, some of the effects in the study that were significant for everybody together, the whole group together, then were no longer significant once they were separated by SES. That was one of the things they brought up. Because much of the literature considers Hispanics as one big population rather than separate SES groups, um, the reported, reported effects sorry, in past research may be a little deceiving and may not actually be applicable to either high or low SES students. Um, so I feel like the socioeconomic differences should be explored with Hispanic families in more depth to figure out um, more about what's going on there. And then um, qualitative research has documented differences in ethnic perceptions of family involvement. When looking specifically at Hispanic families, we also see that parent expectations of their role in education are different based on their economic status. So be both of um, these differences have important implication then for practitioners. Um, they're all there are cultural differences by ethnicity and SES between Hispanics and school personnel, too, um, we found. And so this makes, I say past research found, I did nothing. Um, this makes relationships, like working together for the good of the children, harder. So there is a gap. Um, but it's my hope that the information from this study will then provide that culture-specific help um, to bridge the gap and make that process a little bit simpler through helping school personnel and families. So. Um, a few suggestions on bridging that gap, uh, establishing shared understanding, so learning those cultural practices and expectations for the different groups and for the families. Um, so for example, teachers and administrators could identify common ground with Hispanic students and based on that culture. Um, it may take a lot of effort, <laughs> these things tend to take effort. Um, but hopefully this will help narrow that cultural gap a little bit between school personnel and the students that they serve. Um, also showing respect for parents' current involvement. This study does show that parents who don't show up the school, at the school building are still yeah. often engaged with their children in unseen ways that are very culturally important to them. And they have a compelling influence on student success, you know, more so even than being at the school building. And so it's important to understand that that, um, that involvement is still maybe taking place. Yeah. And as school personnel understand which family practices among Hispanic families have the greatest impact on which student outcomes, then they can emphasize those practices um, that will have the greatest influence on their students to help, help their students succeed. And then families, um, it can also then help families to you know, engage in the, the practices most applicable. It can be reassuring and empowering for them to know that what they are doing is working. It's doing something. Obviously, you can't usually physically see, like, oh, what I did yesterday is going to ma matter on their GPA. Like, it's hard to, to see that. Um, so I, I feel like it should be reassuring and empowering. Um, and then also that the, involve that the involvement that they value truly is influencing students. Um, within this different cultural environment of school. And it can be, um, 
empowering to know that if they're unable to like leave work to attend a parent night, that perhaps taking a day trip or going out with their child when they are off work can still influence them. So they can find other ways. Obviously the cumulative effect of you know, relevant involvement will be the most powerful, um, but parents shouldn't be discouraged from any involvement just because they can't do um, one specific form. So um, there were also limitations in the study, but I think you can ask me about those later if you care enough. <laughs> Um, obviously we can't account for everything in the studies, proxies aren't perfect representations. Um, you know, there's, I'm not Hispanic, so <laughs> there's a little bit of researcher bias and things like that. Um, but, so all of this information obviously should be taken with the fact that there are limitations to the research. Thank you. That's it. Terrific job, and also a terrific job to um, Joseph and Dave. I'm so <laughs> impressed. <laughs> Big help to mom. Um, we've got, I think, a number of folks online too. Maureen Wright. Yeah, we're going to pull this 11. up on this screen and open it up for um, questions and comments from the group. So, uh, can you say again how um, school involvement was? Met, who, who, how it was measured and who the data were, those data were collected from? Yes, the so school involvement <coughs> was measured by, I can get back to the slide for a visual on that. Oh, there we go. So rules, that was a, from the parent survey. Um, it was things like if you, you know, if you had rules about your kids going out on school nights, about checking their homework, things like that. Um, Communication was parent-student communication. Some of it was academic, but some was also um, just you know spending time talking together. Or how often do you talk to your student child about national events and things like that? Um, so these were all these were both parent report, and these were actually parent report as well. Actually, all yeah, I think all of them were parent yeah, that's, report. That school involvement was parent was parent report. Yes, that was parent reported. I think all of them were, in part because the student survey had a lot more missing data right, right. for those. Um, some of them, not all of them even had proxies on the student survey. Like obviously they didn't ask the students if their parents were involved at school. Um, so at, at school involvement really means going to the school and being involved in yes, some way. Yes, so being at PTO was right. three of the questions. Okay. Like attending their, if you were part of the organization, if you attended their events, something else with PTO, I'd have to look it up. That's okay. Um, That's okay. So yeah, it, PTO was a huge part of it, which in past research, like <coughs> Hispanic families really just aren't that involved in PTO. Like they don't, I feel like they don't necessarily see the connection between I need to go to a PTO meeting and that will help my child somehow. Like for them, I think there's, in the research it shows there's not for them a huge connect between that. Uh, so. Schools do a really lousy job of reaching out to parents as as it's well. true. They, there's maybe not as, uh, yeah, there's some on both ends. <laughs> um, and the sample was, it was stratified? Yes. Was it, uh, the, the, the samples? Yes. It was a stratified probability sample um, nationally. The, it was done by the National Center for Education mm -hmm. Statistics. Other questions? Yeah. 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 I have a comment. In, in the part where you were talking about the type of involvement, Holly, mm -hmm. um, it really um, clearly, as you said, it, it's a different kind of involvement with, with their children's education uh, that is, is mostly seen among Hispanics. And once again, talking about low socioeconomic level, there is a clear example of that, that portrays how they really care. It's just a different kind of involvement. There was the uh, this Title One schools after the school program that it's it's not longer effective in South Carolina because the governor is is based on go federal funding. So the government the governor decided to stop it. But it was it was expanded across South Carolina, and um, what they did they offered this free in home. A, a after the school, uh, it's more like um, 
homework tutoring oh. to kids uh, of minority children mm -hmm. in general. And what I heard, uh, because uh, somebody close to me was involved as a tutor, and uh, one of the providers, because they choose like organizations to provide the uh -huh. services, they contracted with local organizations, that m most, most of the children were Hispanics across minorities, like it was like 80% maybe like a huge representation, and that involves you accepting somebody to come into your house, sitting in a space where they won't be interrupted, kind of creating that environment within your household. So you really have to care as a parent to give up that hour, two hours of your space so your kids could have that support. And, and to me, that's one of the examples that shows that if this kind of involvement could be translated into the household or the community, definitely you can see that it's a huge participation because, because they do care. It's just if the school necessarily, as, as Jim said, is not, uh, not making doing like, the best work. Um, and, and by my experience, when I've been attending PTO meetings, is, uh, everything is in English. It's not a problem to me, but we know that most Spanish for low socioeconomic levels are not proficient in English. So you're going to be at a meeting where you're not going to understand anything, right? And even if you do understand, it's, there, is, there are no spaces for creating connections within parents. It's just listening, finish leaving the school. So it's, it's kind of I mean, really a dynamic that um, um, nurture interaction yeah. and connection with the school. Yeah. So um, I think that, that your study really shows that that's a reality. It's a different type of involvement, a different type of engagement uh, of Latino parents that we need to try to foster and, and even celebrate because it really helps in their student outcomes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there was just a story on NPR yesterday about um, some research has been done on uh, teacher ho teachers making home visits, the extent to which that keeps um, kids in school or increases attendance, school attendance. And of course, kids have to be in school to, to learn. And it's research shows that it's very effective, but the problem is it's very labor intensive. So if you've yeah. got a, a teacher who's got 30 kids in the classroom and she's spending a half an hour with each family plus travel time, and that's a big chunk out of it. Yeah, uh, for a big chunk of time for a teacher to do, but it's a there, there were a few studies where they had, um, or programs where they had tried um, paying the teachers then, because they knew that, you know, the lab teachers have a second job. Right. So and so they, they would then pay the teachers to do the home visits, so that way they were getting paid for their time, um, which helped obviously both sides a little bit too. Um, but yes, home visits have been shown to be very effective, just, it's just the time and the, to do that is right. a lot so of... So the other thing that would be interesting here is that my guess is that there are, are uh, between school differences in terms of the level of in, uh, the extent to which schools actively reach out to reach out to parents and yeah. um, and I don't know whether there's any data that was collected to look at no. school level or even district level practices in terms of uh, uh, yeah, not on this survey. There have been some other studies where they mm -hmm. have reached out, and I mean, ideally, right? You you have all the directions. You take the students' perspective, the parents' right. perspective, yeah. Yeah. you know, and the schools. But um, yeah, this study only has a only has the one direction, but um, this definitely would help. And there was actually, to Aurelis's point, there was a study as well that talked about that compared homework help when it was just help at home and when it was when tutoring was accounted for like you know did you help your children with your homework or did you help them or get tutoring services for them and obviously that increased the help a lot was this idea of like maybe I can't help my kids with their homework but I'm still making sure that they get help somehow especially among high school students like you know my son when my son comes home with certain high school homework, it's going to be <laughs> daddy or a tutor or somebody, like, Wait, not doing physics, I'm not doing, <laughs> I 
didn't even graduate you in have physics. A, you, have a PhD. you have a PhD. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Once you get that diploma, so I, can do I can do anything, right? <laughs> Tell this teacher, I'm right, I got a PhD. Right. Something else I wanted to add that uh, just for future research, it will be interesting to see what role plays the immigration status of the parents. Yeah. It could be also another source of fear to be at school, like like if you feel you are not, uh, you don't have proper documents just to expose yourself, and um, how that plays out. That's true. I could, I did have one more slide about future research. I was just gonna say. So I what are your next add, steps? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about. I mean, it was I think like, this oh, is, that was the end. No, you've wasn't. done a great job of really. I mean, I think this is such a contribution to the literature, but it raises okay. so many questions. So, what are your next? It thoughts? does raise a lot of questions. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Not that last slide. Um, so, recommendations for future research kind of looking at those differences uh, between high and low SES families, how they perceive those constructs differently. Like that's, that's a big deal, I feel like. Um, and we should figure out how they're perceiving them and why, kind of what's, what are those underlying factors um, and those differences. We have an expert on measurement and That's right. That. So maybe me and Natasha will get together, <laughs> get together at that. Um, and then the like, levels and types of family educational <coughs> involvement. Um, so how those, because there are differences in how they engage, obviously I only measured five practices, but there are lots of ways to be involved in education. And so um, looking more at that, how those different SES groups are being involved and seeing if there are more differences in, um, in where, where those differences lie. And then also uh, the idea of finding culturally appropriate forms of family engagement. So there, there's been uh, there have been quite a few comments in past research about how maybe um, our current definitions of family involvement are very white and middle class, and so um, maybe taking these other ideas of a, you know this idea of a polio, the, the moral and emotional support that you're giving to your children being valuable. Um, and influencing, so taking those kind of things and trying to figure out how to measure those. Um, and then also maybe looking at other cultures, obviously I looked at Hispanics, but trying to see are these same patterns for SES and things also true for, you know, black families, for Asian families. Um, and then those similarities and differences among students and parents, so kind of comparing student and parent reports, like, is this, are students also viewing it this way or not? Um, there were some things that were, could be compared on this large sample, but not all of them, so, um, and there was a lot more missing data on this student part, making it a little harder to do as well, but that's another um, factor that could, could play in. So. We've got a couple of comments online. Um, congratulations from Janelle and Jasmine. And Jasmine is really intrigued by the findings of your measurement and variance. She thinks this is going to be a contribution yes. to the field. Mark wants to know uh, if you can talk a little bit about your future plans. My future plans. I'm going to lunch and I have to That's right, true. Lunch is next and then graduation ceremony. Uh, yes, my, I've been very focused on my immediate future and travel plans recently. But um, I am currently uh, looking into doing research, I should say part time, kind of on the side, as I've kind of been doing my PhD on the side too. Um, obviously, I have two little boys and um, I feel like being home with them is a very important part of their growth and development and so I'm I am planning to continue to stay home with them until they're in school um, and then but I, I'm hoping uh, to work I'm looking at some different foundations and different research centers uh, to see if they would like someone to even volunteer perhaps in exchange for access to <laughs> To research um, to work with them on uh, there was actually a, a postdoctoral position that Sue had actually emailed me that I was probably gonna send a, a resume to just to see um, 
if she would like some distance help <laughs> for yes. that, uh, you know, maybe 10 hours a week or something, just while they're napping or at night or whatever, um, being able to continue doing some research and publishing. I'm hoping to publish uh, some stuff out of my dissertation. Um, so that's, I guess, publications and then some kind of uh, research kind of on the low for a little while. Um, and then we'll see after that where that takes me. Uh, being a Department of Family and Community Studies, I think that <laughs> Focusing on family is a fine. We're in favor of that. We like to. We do believe in practicing what we preach. So. <laughs> well, I I would just like to say that it has been my absolute pleasure to chair your committee. I want to recognize the other committee members, Aurelis and Marty. Who couldn't be here. Mark, who is online, um, but and to watch your growth over the last number of years. Um, life has changed a lot for Holly since we met her. She's lived in four, four different states, I believe, yeah. has added three very important members to her family. Um, and uh, while experiencing all these wonderful life changes, you have just done a beautiful job in this program with your coursework, your comprehensive exams, and as evidenced here today, your, your dissertation. Um, so impressed with your work ethic, your initiative, um, yeah. come to me or Marty or Aurelis yeah. with questions, but really then uh, on your own tackled uh, yeah. very comprehensive literature, um, complex yeah. analyses, you have just done a beautiful job. We're so proud of the researcher you've become and always have been <laughs> impressed with the person that you are. So we are going to miss you terribly, but I heard her say she was looking forward to volunteering. <laughs> so maybe we won't lose you, but uh, I want to present you with your uh, your desk wedge. Your <laughs> desk wedge. <laughs> Dr. Grover, welcome to you. Welcome to, to the Academy. The Academy. Yeah. <laughs> that's the word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So well done. Thank you. Also, congratulations from Ludmila and Laura Bogart. Uh, can you hear the you. online applause? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Holly. Thank you. Okay. Well done. Boys, well done. I'm still impressed. Wow. <laughs> Daddy's done a good job. Congratulations, Holly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And then they're a dollar. <laughs> Thank you. And very well. I think so too. I'm very <laughs> really biased. <laughs> really. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <sighs> Good luck. Thank you for all of your help. Enjoy the rest Free of the time. Like Shelly. Shelly. It's not like you're streaming. Poor Shelly. Yes. Last minute emails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no, I never said that. It's true. I did yes. you call it. I See how it goes. Yeah, yeah, I think it's supposed to get sunny. Yeah, I'm hoping. I mean, I download research before I graduate to make sure it's all current. Half of it's out of data. You know, I'm like, trying to download all the recent articles I could read them and update everything. <laughs> Congratulations, Holly. Thank you so well done. Thank you, thank you. Good Stay job. Well. Thanks, you too. <laughs>
What a great job. Thank you. I'm really proud of this. Yeah. Oh, sure. Like, oh, it's okay. You don't have to worry about it. I'll, I'll put it back. Where are you guys going? We're going to the Bandit Center. Okay. We've got a reservation. Sounds good. Join us. Yeah, we should. I could. But enjoy. Yeah, I was able to. He was coming. Well, I'll see you. Oh, my kids. Will you be coming back to the office? I don't know. I don't know if they have a reason to. He's funny, funny. I was leaving.